Friends, today's tech review is going to be one with a theme, inspirations. And it comes from a car you and I just looked at a couple of days ago, the all new for 2018 Lexus LS 500, the one with the V6 twin turbo. Well, I'm not gonna tell you anything shocking by saying that Genesis, the uptown version of Hyundai, was absolutely inspired by the Lexus vehicles for the past 28 years, as well as the business of Lexus. But it was what, a little over a year ago that you and I drove the new crown, interesting what I said there, crown, get it, of the Genesis brand, the G90, uh, that was fitted with an all new V6 twin turbo. So now I'm confused, who's inspiring who? Because the Genesis G90 had the V6 twin turbo before the Lexus. Anyway, we'll come back to that. But now that V6 twin turbo, it finds its way into the Genesis we like the most, the G80. So let's unpack what makes up a Genesis G80 Sport and not just the engine. Now let's start with a change that falls under the heading of Captain Obvious, and that is the engine. A 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 outputs as follows, 365 horsepower, not bad at all, comes in at a relatively aggressive 6,000 RPM. Torque, more important to us, 376 pound-feet, comes in at an incredibly low 1,300 RPM, stays flat all the way up to 4,500 RPM. Now, very important to understand here is how does that compare to the other engines on offer? There's that basic low-feature V6 that's on offer, does a great job, 311 horsepower and 293 pound-feet of torque, very respectable. But the V8, that's where we get to the conundrum. That's the one we drove with Matt Becker of Lotus when we first drove this vehicle. And that one, 420 horsepower, not bad. 44 more horsepower, always a good thing. The torque, that's, that's the question mark. The deficit this V6 has under that 5-liter V8, the Taro V8, is only 7 pounds lower. So that's something you and I are going to really have to unpack in the full first drive review, so make sure you come back for that. The rest of it is all pretty much the same, whether it's this engine or the other two engines, anything you want as long as it's an 8-speed automatic. Uh, in this case, it drives the wheels that God intended, the rear wheels. Uh, there is an option for an all-wheel drive model. I believe that is everything. Let's unpack some of the other changes that make up the sport besides the engine and the funky grill. Now at the outset of any discussion involving driving dynamics and the Genesis G80, specifically the US build, I feel compelled to remind you that the suspension has been tinkered with by the folks at Lotus, specifically old friend of the show Matthew Becker who now is at Aston Martin, so stick that in your pipe and smoke it. That said, there are some changes in the trip from standard Genesis G80 to Genesis G80 Sport. Now all these make do with the same 5-link unit in the front and the 5-link unit in the rear. Uh, that said, the stabilizer bar in the front that goes to a hollow unit and the stabilizer bar in the rear remains solid. Uh, then the brakes change, but to unpack that we need to understand the brakes in the lower models. Uh, in that low-tech V6, the diameter of the rotors is 13.6 in the front and then the rear it's 12.4. In the V8 it moves to 14.2 here, stays 12.4 in the rear. Uh, the Sport model, it pilfers the rotors uh, from the V8, the front rotors. However, it has its own rotors in the back, 13-inch uh, diameter. Then there are the wheels, uh, 19 inches, and can I say they look incredibly cool with this nickel color finish, especially with the stunning color. Uh, but, you know, may I love me the details? So, uh, John and Brad at Genesis Design, they put this amazing copper trim cover here, this cap. It's... I mean, it's the piece de resistance of the wheels. That said, while I'm sitting here and looking at the wheel more in detail and the tire, uh, a little behind the scenes, I usually shoot the tech review first and then the first drive review. This I did in reverse, and can I just say, by how much I scrubbed these tires, we must have had a hell of a lot of fun in the first drive review. So make sure you come back for that. Now, you and I have already spent a lot of time in the front seat of a G80, which I would argue is the model of UX restraint in modern interior design. Translated, it has buttons. It still has knobs for radio. Think of this as like an open letter to all interior designers and UX designers. 
Haptic feedback, not exactly the safest idea when piloting a two to 5,000 pound vehicle. How about more buttons, more knobs, maybe even some toggle switches? That would be not only safe, but very cool, retro cool. Anyway, let's get to the back seat here. This seat is where I would be driving it. Plenty of room back here, and we're gonna spend some time talking about why that is in the full first drive review, so make sure you come back for that. As far as changes between a standard G80 and a G80 Sport, some of the trim here changes. I'm not a huge fan of carbon fiber, but I can see why they do it here. The aluminum trim is a nice touch. Uh, the headliner, not Alcantara, but it's like a faux Alcantara really adds to the tactile feel of the whole deal, especially when there's a panoramic sunroof is fitted to this one. And then there is some other niceties back here, like you can control the vents, its own HVAC system back here, as well as heated seats outboard. Uh, and then there is an offset stitch that picks up the same copper color from those wheels. Neat design touch. And then last but not least, uh, finally, in the Genesis, Apple CarPlay is now fitted as standard, although an odd note, it only works with the front USB, not the USB in the center console. Not understanding why. Maybe they should be able to do both. Uh, that is about it. So let's go back outside. Now, before you and I part ways for the day, we still have some more numbers to unpack, most important being the weight. Two-wheel drive, meaning rear-wheel drive, twin-turbo V6 G80 Sport like this one, 4,519 pounds. If you were to send the power to the front wheels as well, 4,694 pounds. Now, as a basis of comparison, that is 40 pounds less than the V8 and about 300 pounds more than the low-tech V6. Now, that comparison is consistent between two-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. Now we have to move on to the sorta of, kinda of reason for being for the twin turbo V6, and that is the fuel economy. Again, basis of comparison, low tech V6, 1927, V8, 1524, twin turbo V6, 1725. Now that is something that is going to come up in the full first drive review, so make sure you come back for that. In the interim, I wanna leave you with a question. And it's something that's been weighing on me as I've been driving this, because it has something to do with this, as well as that G90 episode from Canada that we shot, what, a little over a year ago? And in that episode, I shared with you a concern that Genesis as a business wants to follow the lead of like Audi and BMW and specifically Jaguar and Land Rover and bring their lease versus buy percentage higher so they can get more cars out on the road. And my concern in that episode and this as well is these are good cars. And it, it, when you come to me and ask me for a suggestion of like a mid-sized luxury car, just any kind of luxury sport car, I usually put this high on the list. And that's for three reasons. Number one, it's got good value. And number two, have I told you it's got a suspension tuned by Lotus? And then number three, most important, the resale is good because the lease versus buy percentage is low. So I turn this around to you guys. If you're going to get one of these, would you lease it or would you buy it? And don't just tell me which one, but why. And most important, what region of the world do you hail from? Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with a fun fact. And the fun fact in this case is a bit of a pet peeve. You know how I like to talk about the throttle mapping and the suspension tuning, all that stuff, to be able to separate it so you can have stiff suspension and like the frugal economy mode of the engine driving around town? Well, here's one instance where you can't separate it. It's either sport, eco, or regular. So an open letter to Herr Biermann, please separate the throttle mapping and the suspension tuning. I would greatly appreciate it. Until we see you next time, bis später.